So thank you, Enrique, for this uh, uh, great uh, introduction. Uh, so now I have the, the pressure. So, OK. <laughs> So I guess it will be a problem, because, um, but I will try to do the best, or my best. Uh, so just to introduce, or just to explain a little bit about this uh, presentation, it won't be, I won't present the projects. Uh, it's a new step for us. We try to identify uh, what is so important for us. So it will be like a slideshow. A uh, lot of uh, images, and I will try to explain uh, what is so important for us. So uh, I hope it won't be uh, too boring. Uh, but okay, let's uh, let's go because I think uh, the goal of that kind of uh, lectures is uh, not to describe the projects, uh, but maybe much more to explain uh, our daily life, our uh, daily practice, uh, what we do in the office, and uh, what is so important. So uh, whenever we have uh, to present our work, it is time to question our production, our methodology, and the strong lines that define the architecture we produce. So the first question is to know what we ourselves retain and what points we want to insist on. So along our practice, we have realized one thing, that our production, uh, whether through our method, our achievement, is based on a grid spontaneity, and, that is, and this is actually made up of many aspects that we do not necessarily want to uh, prioritize. So there are many faces uh, of our work that we value and that we have, uh, that have emerged and evolved, that exist and that together form the architecture that is ours. So sometimes they meet Sometimes they are really independent of each other. So what is certain is that for us, architecture is above all a story, a narrative that takes those who built it and those who use it on a very particular and unique journey. So we, so we ask ourselves, how do we tell a story that is actually made up of a multi multitude of stories? And we realized uh, quite fast that it was a format that already existed, notably the tales, which in addition have been widely illustrated and, re and reinterpreted over time, as for example, David Hockney did by illustrating six grim tales. Or as did the French author Raymond Queneau, who wrote a very short story 99 times using 99 different writing styles. And actually, with this book, the author tells that there are at least 99 possible aspects of the same story, depending on the, of the point of view, depending on what one wants to insist on. So we can also find this format in Stefan Shaw's photographic work. In this set of photographs called American Surfaces, he decided to illustrate what America is for him through pictures of very diverse surfaces. And this is also, in a way, what we did with our last uh, publication, a book named Semblaise, dedicated to the cultural and sports center in Paris we completed four years ago. In this book, a set of black and white photographs of users and details of the, pub of the, building, of the building constitute a portrait of the cultural and sports center, even if the majority of the scenes photographed don't focus at all on the building itself. So in fact, this introduction is uh, to say that the gathering of small stories that paint the portrait of the great history have always pleased us. And this is something that is rarely talked about during lectures, and yet this is particularly important to us. Which format do we choose to talk about our work? So that rather than describing and developing the guidelines, of our practice or presenting one by one each of our buildings, we prefer to present all of this through what we have called 13 stories of contemporaneity. And those 13 
stories of chap or chapters are together a journey through images, sometimes references, but mostly pictures of our projects. It is a journey that we will more suggestive or narrative than descriptive. It is a set of small stories, all independent of each other, which are just the translation of different space aspects, different themes, and different methods that make up our whole architecture without any necessary hierarchy. Every day, every pro problem, question, issue finally speak about the same subject. Our goal is to communicate more the breaches and entrenchments of the architecture we produce than a detailed view of each of our buildings or even their purpose. There are 14 of those of the thousands of possible chapters that could be talked that could be talked to talk about a practice, a building, a place. So it is just 14 ways of to honestly explain how we work without theorizing anything. And if there are stories of contemporaneity, it is because there is a constant objective in our work. It is to respond to contemporary issues and we will see how we try to remain relevant in this objective despite the extremely changing and stable and indefinite character of what we call contemporaneity. So at the moment in architecture, the trend is toward anti-formalism, but we think that the word is badly chosen and that there is a big difference between being ostentatious and being formalist. Finally, the work on the form is something is not something negative. It is something to banish. It is only necessary not to limit oneself to it. So form is the reflection of substance. It makes through concrete and material, materialize them. So the form of, the, of a thing is what we see first, what we can apprehend directly, and finally what conditions our relationship with the object in question. So in a building, form is what is accessible first and foremost to users. A, bu a building is inevitably as shape and necessarily a form. To be honest, we have obsessions with certain forms because they come sponta spontaneously because we like them. We realize that through our work on the plan, adjust, decline, reproduce forms until the plan is sat satisfactory, efficient. And this is the case in all project plans at all scales. And we constantly try not to limit ourselves to a bit, to forms that we are used to see, to form that are supposed to guarantee a certain efficiency whether spatial or constructive. We are convinced that we must be smarter than usual, that if, that if we want to make a contribution, we must take risk and go further. So for us, plants are the perfect illustration of the meeting between rigor and intuition. Brancusi, we saw a picture just before, is a good example. It is a sculpture, so we could Imagine that the shapes in his sculptures are what is most important, especially because he also has his obsessions. So he worked on continuous on similar forms for many years, but he defends himself from being a formalist. And while this is what he is working on, he explains that his quest is simply to grasp the essence of the material he sculpts. We could also consider the opposition and say that we finally arrive at a catalog of forms that we could have fun interpreting after those, as Jean Harp did with humor in his Harpadian Encyclopedia. We could one day make our Bruterian Encyclopedia and assume that those forms have their qualities completely independent of the content context in which they were born. 
So plans and all the drawings, as well as all the tools used by architects in general are extremely important in our practice. So first of all, as means of representation, but before that as means of communication and even before that as working tools. So when we are faced with any situation, we systematically value the making. So we consider that making is not only a way of stimulating thought, but that is a way of thinking as such. So of course, this is obviously in the models we produce. At any scales, for any occasions, we make models. Here is a series of photographs of very different models, making the very condition of the existence of all our projects. For us, making means being able to let things appear gradually. It is, it's building step by step, a whole, unique and free. Making means creating possibilities, creating realities, creating objects that relents, uh, relentlessly question the surrounding words. It's drawing a topographic map of unknown territory. So making is to take advantage of hesitations and ask questions over and over again. And we can see the evolution, the work at different scales. We can see how useful this attitude is to us at different phases of the project. For example, here, for the windows of a residence for researchers in Paris, we almost completed. Models until one-to-one -one scale. But beyond the models and all the design work, we consider that one, uh, an architectural space in, uh, is never definitive. We think that production takes place permanently throughout the project. The picture taken during the construction phase give another reading of the projects because they, they raise the question of the finished and unfinished. They reveal specific moments, those when opportunities for action can be sized, where they can be sized and sometimes where they must be sized. Indeed, very often objectives are developed on issues, on difficulties that we encounter. So the chain to reach the end of the project is systematically build it. And we must constantly fight to defend it and to bring it to a successful conclusion. Moments when we are in danger are the most stimulating. And it is from those moments that the richness ideas, the most innovative, the most relevant solutions are born. So the defense of the chain leading to the finality of the project is a struggle. It is a power relationship and a balance game. Balance is crucial in order not to remain stuck on a fixed idea, but on the contrary to size, opportunities, controlling them and making situations and respond, response evolve. This is, in a way, the definition of uh, alchemy or alchemy. Uh, perhaps we can say that we are alchemistic architects. The term in its current uh, meaning means mastery of balance and its Arabic etymology, alchemia, the <coughs> design it, uh, the science of quantities. And that's what we are trying to do. Find the balance between the elements that make up the building, between the actors involved in the project, between what is acceptable and what is not, what we accept and what we don't. We are convinced that immutable rules do not exist, neither, to, neither do untouchable conventions. A friend called this position statement, regularly readable in our buildings, the translation of acts or actions. 
And he was right because that is exactly what we do. We act. We make decisions that ensure our freedom. Those decisions have formal and aesthetic consequences, but, we are they, but they are not motivated by them. They often manifest themselves through ad hoc interventions that in reality allow us to continually prove that it's possible to diffuse subjects referring to subjectivity. We assume that certain things, decisions, actions, interventions may have absolutely no reason to exist. Others have reasons to exist, of course, even most of them, but some just don't. This does not mean that they are not sourceful. This means that they exist below and beyond justification and that they are crystallized an in initiative. Therefore, we claim ourselves bricoleurs for the spontaneity of those acts, independent of explanations on the one end, and because they, full, they fall under the very definition of bricolage on the other end. They involve the reorganization of elements belonging to the closed instrumental universe. This reorganization of existing things is unexpected, innovative, intuitive, something with a wobbly appearance, often effective and systematically creative on new associations. And this reorganization established architectural qualities in our point of view. So those qualities are in the intimately linked to what could be described in our buildings as entities that goes against the usual look. Objects, let's say that they are generally prohibited or ordinarily set aside. So we defend ourselves against optimization or rationality. We sometimes seek inconsistencies. In this reorganization of elements indifferent to any submission to stand standardized and identified regimes, our buildings offer what we could usually only imagine. And therefore, they become extraordinary mixtures of familiarity and never seen, known or unknown. Each element of a project can be considered as independent from all other elements. We're interested in all the features that make up a project. We focus and work on them one by one, almost independently from each other. This is quite clear at the rather advanced stage of our projects on elements that are details. Even on the furnitures we design, we can see that the parts are autonomous. But in reality, it becomes particularly interesting when we proceed to a mise en abyme of this process. The way we treat details in the same we treat other elements in plan at all scales. We just apply the same methods at each scale. In our project plans, it is therefore clear that each element retains its own technical and aesthetic autonomy. The structure, system, partition, facets, etc., can those be usually identified as independent of each other? Amongst all the elements that make up a project structure is certainly the main component. Our buildings are like skeletons. The structures are the host or various other devices which will specify the spaces, the atmospheres, the places. But the structures themselves are open and allow evolutions 
which reinforces the importance of their autonomy. However, we believe that this autonomy is receivable in its grad radicalism only because it is not absolute. It exists exclusively to better meet other forms of autonomy. Because in addition to all architectural devices, other elements are unavoidable added, notably elements that are linked to uses or to appropriation. Those elements often do not belong to the same vocabulary and reinforce the autonomy between components. Once all the devices have been treated autonomously, the aim is to allow those elements to cohabitate. The target is to find a way to make them meet. We can say that on a different scale, our same instinct of bricoleur pushes us to proceed by assembling just like making a collage. In a way, for us, a project is in reality an inf infinity of projects, an agglomeration of projects that are put together. This basically reflects our perpetual and voluntary search for a kind of instability at once formal, constrictive, and programmatic <laughs> that we wish to be tangible in each of our production. And if we value this instability, it is because it is linked to the question of the cohabitation of differences. Bringing differences together means highlighting the otherness and richness they offer. In two words, what we're describing here in different ways is what we call putting together. This formula has become a leitmotiv in our practice because it illustrates not only the almost literal description of our practice, but also because it symbolically retraces a much deeper will that we have of unit of peaceful and successful encounter, a while that is found well beyond the assembly between the material elements since it touches areas entirely detached from a possible uh, quantification. We will come back to this later. So we saw how a column meets the underside of a slab, or here, our tie road takes place in front of a window. But this assembly reasoning also works with the position of a neon or even in the relationship between the curtain, a beam, and the color of a beam. This approach of assembling and putting together in, induce a dimension of non-control in our practice. This dimension reinforces the combinatorial aspect of the project that we propose, or at least of the methods generating this elaboration. In our case, this dimension is particularly visible in the almost absolute lack of design of the facades of our buildings, or more precisely, not really a lack of conception, but a blind conception without premeditation. Rather than drawing a facade, we let the assembling of elements each treated in an elementary way and then added to each other to form the facade. So the facade is the consequence of the project. We do not anticipate any result. We do not propose any specific composition. The drawing of the facade emerges at the end of the project. It is not predefined. The interior, which we treat largely, condition the aspect of the interface of the buildings with the outside. This way of proceeding, as risky as it may seem, can in fact very well give a repetitive character to the façade. But often, accidents occur. This ensures that the façade is not unambiguous, but plural. By letting the plan generate the façade, by letting each treated element elaborate the result, it often 
happens that constraints disturb the facade. Sometimes no senses or absurdities punctuated the facade and create unexpected, strange situations. In any case, the building emerges on the facade. Thus, the facade makes the layer design process visible. The structure remain, remains independent of the facade to lighten the building's function. At the same time, the building is not enclosed in a facade since it allows the skeleton to be exposed and revealed therefore the identity of the building. So the facade is intrinsically linked to the interior of the building and does not camouflage it. Among the elements of a project, and finally in the continuity of non-controlling everything, we have a particular relationship with the technical objects that are necessary part of the project, of the building. So those objects represent for us the opportunity to create new specialities, new situations, and to enrich a place. A building is an accumulation of constraints, standards, demands, and requirements that are often seen as negative things. As Rem Kulas pointed out, for example, we should ensure that everything in our current system that is rejected as waste from the project is turned to our advantage. One third of a project and therefore 50 percent of the budget is usually inaccessible and left unattended by the architect. So we work on technical devices and we highlight them. They become manifest of the BA taken to give a meaningful part to reject components. Spaces of our buildings evolve hand in hand with technical objects, be it a sheath, an escalator, a chimney. And this also applies to our relationship with normative rules. In the construction of a building in the same way as technical objects, norms very quickly and very often become constraints, obstacles in the elaboration of a project. So since it is possible to ignore them in order to circumvent them, we have decided not to reject them. On the contrary, we assume them and we certainly do not try to hide them. We exacerbate, we exacerbate them and we're attentive to what they can produce. So for example, here along the exterior emergency staircase of the saint Blaise Cultural and Sports Center, a wall made of breezed blocks over the entire height ensures its function of low cost fire break and in fine uh, and in fine uh, takes an important part in the identity, identity of the project. So the last step is to find the details that put the norms into perspective that will make them appear less demanding. Nowadays, when building, the challenge is often to offer flexible spaces the difficult then is to be generic to ensure as possible evolution while remaining specific, faithful to the place, to the request which motivates the project to the envy of the customer and future users. So this is why we are particularly attached to the idea of drawing absolutely every nook on cranny the smallest details of all our projects, adjusting them
to that they correspond exactly to what we want, to what we think is relevant and important. And for us, this is what makes our projects unique and in our opinion, that is what ensures their quality. So we like to say that our buildings are like hangars, warehouses, but then sophisticated hangars. This is consistent with our hard work on plants drawings. So for example, here the refinement of the plan results in a triangle uh, staircase whose columns also have a triangular section. So this reflects the importance we attach to application, care and precision. Doing things well with accuracy justifies all the decisions we make. If there is, no, if, if there is one direction, uh, dimension of our work in which we never compromise, it is in the high requirements we have for the realization of things, both in design and in construction phases. This is the residence for researchers on the Cité Internationale Campus in Paris. And we had an additional furniture mission. And so we draw everything almost uh, to the, the teaspoon of each uh, apartment. Uh, so here a detail bench in the room and it becomes to be incorporated to the project. It is completely reconciled to the other technical devices inherent to the facade. Or again, in social housing units in Paris, our work on the color combination of the curtains in according with the color of the walls illustrates the desire to go to the end of things to define what appears to us to be part of the project. In other words, for us, tailor-made means using current technologies and diverting th them. It means to achieve specificity with generic tools where norms and rules can lead to something hyper uh, pre, uh, prescriptive. We play at uh, deflecting them obstacles. We could say that we un Standard, standardized standard objects. Here, for example, the plan of the new generation research center, which should have been very different because of the smoke extraction standard. So the imperatives pushed us to be ingenious, to achieve our ends and to give rise to the facade with the ATF cushions. So this question of unstandardizing the standards and designing tailor-made uh, projects uh, finally joins the attachment we have to one-to-one mock-up. Mock-ups are the objects that allows MIDI adjustment between the two grid times of a project. So they are located between the ideal context of the design and the concrete context of the construction. So if something has to evolve in the future building, the mock-up makes it possible to define what. It does not really serve to expose the constructive mechanics, but rather the building in a more general sense. And if the mock-up is given so much important, it is also because it gives us a head start it presents opportunities, it gives an overview of the possibilities, and it reveals on which elements and devices it will be possible to bounce back. On the other hand, we never design our facades. For us, they do not involve composition work. They are systematically seeking both neutrality and performance. So they are literally the envelopes of our buildings, so the result of an approach that have not been rezoned as a composition by the positive intermediary between 
this inside and outside the project. So for example, in this project, so the residence for researchers in La Cité Internationale, so we like to say that the window is a wall which expresses this notion of overlap quite well. What was interesting in that case was to find a way to propose a window that would not only be a hole in a wall, but instead become a spatial adjustment. A natural and generous device, but uh, by its mobility, if you open and close it, if you draw the, if you draw the curtains, if you pull down the blinds, this simple window becomes a whole element that modifies the space, the atmosphere of the place, the experience you have of it. But in order to offer a sufficiently rich and simple envelope, which is not an anonymous curtain wall, nor a double skin, which offer wide openings, which is acoustically efficient in a very different context, we had to design particularly elaborate technical devices. The high esteem we have toward technique is a crucial aspect <coughs> of our practice. So for us, technique serves us and serves architecture. And then we consider that technique conditions the, the production of architecture. So we see technique as a nally as a lever, as a springboard that allows us to reach our objectives, that give us knowledge, answers, and therefore considerable power of action. So indeed, our systematic objective is efficiency and performance. In the building that we will soon be building on the EPFL campus, a large part of our attention has once again focused on the membrane that manages the relationship between the external uh, and internal environment. So we have proposed a technical layer that improves the thermal performances of the building both in summer by allowing good air circulation and obviously in winter by adding a large insulating layer all around the building. This membrane consists of a wide corridor that remains temperate thanks to an opening system like a greenhouse. It thus also offers it uh, in itself a space which summer and winter is also usable. So here, the technique is undoubtedly put at the service of uses. This space offers many opportunities for different and freer uses than the other parts of the building. This temperate space manages the climate transition between inside and inside and outside. It is also the same way the transition of uses, the social transition between inside and outside. So in membranes or buildings envelopes, there is not a single system, but several systems that intersect. So generally, in our buildings, it is the techniques chosen that determine the possibility of reversibility, which air system, which air circulation system, which structural system, which material is chosen, so that the program can change as much as possible and the building function in the long term. So here, the section of the rehabilitation of the Galerie Lafayette in Pau, so then this is in the south of France, showed that the facade guarantees comfort to the building. So we are bricoleur. So we have seen it and we are engineers in the same time. So our technical skills serves her permanently and it is a resource to which we have recourses, whatever the face of the project. So it allows us to position ourselves toward openness, toward invention, and it completes the reorganization of the elements we were talking about earlier. It makes reorganization possible. It, 
pro it provides material concrete answers. From a different perspective, the relationship with the environment in which our buildings are located plays an essential role. It is always quite fascinating to see how much the site influences a project and vice versa, how much a building influences its site. So here, a social housing unit that we delivered in uh, Rue Pelport in Paris. So the project has been designed to take advantage of certain extraordinary quali qualities of the site in which it, it is located. So notably, a breathtaking view all over Paris. So we didn't want to limit this extremely rare advantage to living rooms, so we also put the bathrooms on the facade. So when possible, as here, because the environment is exceptional, we are key working to offer users to the attribution of the site through the building. So and this is in line with the question on the envelope we were talking about earlier. Here in Caen, the stakes were completely different. The peninsula of Caen, on which the project is located, located uh, is being reconfigured. So the new building has been chosen to become a landmark like a lighthouse, a stability in a changing place. And we wanted it to shine in the city. And the city to shine in the building. But we have also found ourselves in some very special urban situations. For example, here in Paris, uh, for the Culture and Sports Center in the densest neighborhood in Europe, built it during the, the 80s. It is necessary to carry out a real typological work of the whole building to succeed in being posed fundamentally with the site. In this case, the target was to save ground, to save the smallest footprint in order to open up the neighborhood and to leave as much free public space as possible. Or in the location of the residence for, the, the residence for researchers, the plot is so close to the ring road that the road is almost part of the project. And on the other side, the residents face the park. Everything was de decided to the millimeter in the implementation to establish a beneficial, beneficial relationship between the, uh, the building and the road. As with everything, we do not reject what is usually considered banal or unworthy of interest. On the contrary, we integrate them and transform them into masterpieces of our architecture. And here, it was the case for the road and the surroundings. Here we come to the lived experience of the project. So the title of this picture is, uh, this is the photography of a door, seems rather uh, con contradictory uh, with what we see. It is located on the mezzanine of the new generation research center in Caen, and the sliding glass door offers a view over the rest of the building. So this tool could be a pleasant exercise to catalog all the situations in our buildings where, thanks to reflections, we see something completely different than what we are facing. We are ourselves discover the, those situations each time we go in, in a building that we have built. Each time we see new pictures. And those situations are possible only thanks to all the, word, the work uh, described before. 
even if they were not thought or done to create a reflection as a given time, the spaces were designed in order to let possibilities open. Those situations represent the boundary between what we control and what we do not control. Those pictures also question the problematic of representation, what we want to show on the other end, how to show the feeling, the abstraction in the building on the other hand, and finally how the users, the, pe the people who walk in the building perceive it. So in the temporal question, what interests us is how our, the buildings uh, will be able to adapt when facing changes of societies on sites in which we, they were built. So the characteristic of our time is to be particularly unstable. And as we cannot anticipate the future we decided to bet on the adaptability of spaces, devices, structures. This is why we are constantly looking for a certain neutrality. For us, neutrality allows us to achieve flexibility and ensure a long service life for our buildings. So therefore, the space we produce are often poorly defined to achieve neutrality is to bypass the program or at least what is limit, uh, limiting <laughs> in the programmatic constraints. Here, their small plans show some of the many ways to use and to arrange mega floors of the, mid of the building. And de facto, they correspond to the neutral space. As we kept in mind this idea of neutrality, we often ask ourselves when and where to stop a building. At a certain stage of the construction, the buildings present only the essential, they are only supports, containers. So when do we have to stop? What does it mean to deliver a building? What do we deliver? Everything in the design and construction process of a project is extremely limiting. So perhaps, sometimes, one could say that it is not necessary to finish a project. That ultimate neutrality would allow us to propose only devices that allow things. That allow that a multiple of programs uses in sessions in the context economic, social, urban is possible. So we accept contradictory data, contra contra contradictory positions, contradictory methodologies. So we work with and um, accept those contradictions between because we are fully aware that they define the very sense of architecture and that is the only way not to let them uh, hinder our freedom and the freedom we offer. So we always find a profound contradiction between the real concrete, technical word full of constraints that implies the elaboration of a building and the intangible one of the impressions and experiences that it offers. So this code of the French philosopher Bruno Latour explains it very well. And our last story is a short movie that could be the conclusion of all of those topics a short movie that once again is focused on bridges. 
I don't know if we have the sound or I forgot to ask you, but so I have the sound, but <laughs> just for me. <coughs> Fortunately, it's in French, <laughs> except the title. de culture et culture de garage.
That's all. <laughs> Which is something that I, I, I really somehow in my 22 represent the, the project. I like so much the way the way you presented in a way uh, we were dealing with the different parts of architecture, you know, about the plan, about the facade, you know, about the central plan, about the uh, connection, the flexibility, or the mm -hmm. structure in the, the, the thing. But at the end, the last title is so. Hmm. No, it's yeah. So uh, it's very important uh, topic. I mean, uh, and really, I mean, uh, I think we don't have so many obsessions, but uh, this one is uh, belongs uh, to this uh, set of uh, obsession or just preoccupations. And sometimes you don't know so much why, but uh, but you like to. I mean, uh, I think uh, the idea of the lecture is also to explain. I mean, uh, uh, everything. Uh, has to be uh, considered uh, as a game, uh, really a game, because of course uh, you have so many constraints, and that's what I try to explain. Uh, then you 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 have to find uh, the places uh, where it's possible to, because you have to, you spend so much time to justify your work, to explain your work, and then uh, to make it uh, understandable and. Uh, and then, uh, so of course, sometimes those uh, accidents or these uh, anomalies uh, are absolutely uh, decided just because we feel uh, that it's necessary. I mean, uh, and that's so, but uh, so it's really, uh, I mean, it's not just uh, sometimes it's quite difficult to explain why we decided to move this column from, I mean, we don't put it. Uh, just uh, in the meeting point between the two beams, but it was quite uh, obvious that it's you have to move it. Uh, so it's maybe for students it's not uh, so good to say it so sometimes, but I think the set of decisions for a project is so long that of course a decision that's in from the starting point when you do the competition until the completion. So you have so many decisions to take 
and you have to keep your ideas at the same time. Uh, and then during this process, uh, you need some uh, freedom fields or space where you can uh, say to your clients, okay, watch this, this part, that's absolutely what you need, but you have to keep your uh, private space in the project. So that kind of uh, actions or decisions are absolutely, sometimes there's no reason to do this, but it's just much more a feeling. So, I mean, that's probably, uh, I mean, for that's the first time to present, I mean, to do this lecture in that way. So that's the reason for why I'm not really comfortable uh, in that kind of situations, but uh, I was less <laughs> in this because, uh, I mean, then suddenly we tried to talk in another way as we tried, I mean, I mean as we did this uh, movie at the end, so maybe it's like uh, something quite difficult to not to understand, but uh, this is, and moreover, when, when in, I mean, because it was in French, I mean, the text. Uh, but it's just to also accept that uh, there's something which is, uh, I mean, this is all the time this question between uh, something which has to be really uh, rational, that you have to explain all the time to be accepted by everybody, I mean, with the engineers, with the client, and blah, blah, blah. Um, but at the same time, we know that uh, to be only rash rational is not enough. So all the time we look for that, uh, where is the, this uh, subjective approach uh, and that, can, uh, that kind of events, as you say, I mean, that uh, this uh, pillar or this beam, which is not a beam, but it's not a column at the same time, so we don't know exactly what it is. So it's really, uh, so that's, uh, uh, that's the, the, the playground or the place or, uh, our, uh, how do you say, our hobbies. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, in the beginning, you said that um, like in the current, let's say, architecture of the course, there's this kind of a refusal of formalism. Uh, and then you said that, but, well, we have that obsession with form, and you showed these kind of very um, yeah, beautiful kind of outlines of forms and so I was like all right now he's gonna show a lot of like forms but then when you showed your finished product uh, project you never like really showed it as an object you, you always like went into like limits of like details and all this so I was wondering like in the beginning you said you're obsessed with the form but then when you talk about it there's not much form to look at like um, so I mean where's that maybe so that means maybe we succeeded to reach the goal or the target, I mean, no, it's just a joke. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's just to say that, uh, I mean, because maybe I grew up in that, uh, during this debate about uh, formalism and uh, ah, it's too, f sometimes I know also when you, you work at the office or uh, with the students who say, ah, yeah, okay, this is uh, too formal. I mean, there's too many form. And um, I mean, this is question of formalism. Uh, okay, but at the same time, I mean, that's what I try to explain also uh, uh, at the beginning. I think this is not really the debate because at the end you have to give a form. I mean, it could be a square, it could be a circle, wh whatever. It's just the potential of the geometry, I think, uh, which is so interesting in, our, uh, in this field, I mean, uh, in this field and in some others. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's important, but at the same, it's not so important. So uh, you need those tools. And there, there is also uh, the conviction that uh, the forms or the geometry or the, the work with the, I mean, because we work a lot with the plants and that's uh, probably the main part of our time that we, I mean, of course not, but uh, uh, we spend so much to solve the question of the plants. I mean, just, uh, is it the right uh, form? I mean, the circle or a square, and uh, so not only in the relationship between the building and the surrounding uh, context, but just is it the right uh, uh, typology for that kind of program? So uh, we try to neutralize. I mean, at the same time, we try to neutralize the program, but at the same time, we have to solve it. I mean, if you want to say, okay, tomorrow it will be something else, you can dance, you can. It's a school, but at the, same, uh, at the end, you can live in the school. So, uh, 
so that's uh, but uh, yeah I mean uh, we just have to accept or uh, that uh, we have to <laughs> I mean uh, architecture is a uh, form I mean maybe it's uh, super basic or really naive uh, discourse or uh, but that's the reality I mean uh, so yeah if we succeed to do the demonstration that uh, there is a form, but at the same time it does not exist. Uh, it's not so bad. <laughs> Or beer? That's a good question, uh, really. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, in a certain way, yeah. I mean, uh, or um, I mean the the um, the previous uh, lecture. I mean the 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 type of the format. We talk a lot about uh, not honesty, but just to be honest and just to do the things as we believe and uh, that's probably what is uh, important for us so uh, maybe I prefer this word but uh, I mean it's a really deep question uh, to be honest <laughs> for me so that's uh, quite uh, uh, but I have to think about this <laughs> probably Sorry, I did not understand the, I mean, I don't know if I did not understand the, the could, could you repeat, please? Yeah. No, it was the lecture before. <laughs> I mean, the, I mean, it's just to say, no, all the answers are in the. <laughs> no, it's. Um, I mean, what is uh, quite important. I mean, uh, in our uh, practice with uh, Stephanie, I mean, we don't. I mean, and that's what we try to preserve. I mean, maybe it's a kind of uh, uh, naivete, naivety, no, or to be naive. And um, and I think all the ideas, uh, all the preoccupations that we have now, I mean, uh, grow up uh, by making the projects, and uh, so uh, and it's uh, quite important also just to, I mean, now uh, of course we have to con all the projects that we show you. I mean, you just have to keep it in your mind that they are not really new. I mean, because of course the time to build is quite long, so uh, it's quite strange. I mean, uh, maybe for you it's, uh, but uh, for me it's quite sometimes quite uh, strange to talk about an uh, old project. I mean, uh, because it's far away, or maybe in, in our uh, uh, current uh, preoccupation. But uh, I think, yeah, we don't have any idea about. Uh, I mean, we try to. I mean, that's what is so interesting with that uh, with the lectures. I mean, uh, okay, of course, you can describe the project. Of course, you can uh, do all the time the same uh, explanations, and sometimes you don't have, you don't get time to. But that kind of opportunity is also to uh, the, the right way uh, to think about what we do, uh, because most of the time we think uh, not before but uh, after. Uh, so we do, and then we check. Uh, 
the result and say, okay, so does it work? That, uh, no. So that's really, uh, so that, that's the reason for why I think this idea of bricolage is really important in our uh, approach. So, but of course, uh, in the same way, we have these uh, kind of personal uh, obsessions as we have all of us. I mean, uh, there's some uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, talk, uh, I don't know if it exists in English, but uh, something that you have in your mind, uh, you can do sports, or you can practice sports, you can uh, do th many things, but you keep uh, them all the time. So I think that's... Uh, but uh, I think there's nothing, I mean, uh, we're not thinking before to do the things, to be, if, uh, I hope it's the right uh, answer. Uh, no, no. I mean, of course, you need some engineers. I mean, in the office, uh, there are only um, uh, architects, uh, interns or not, uh, but there are only uh, architects. I mean, uh, it's not only, I mean, it's a choice. And we just believe that it's not really necessary um, to get engineers in an office. But of course, we have some partners for the structure and for so uh, now it's more or less all the time the same the same uh, just because uh, the collaboration i mean uh, they know what we uh, are looking for and uh, we know that uh, what they are able to do and uh, and we know that we find we can find a way so that's absolutely uh, essential in, in our practice but um, also because i, I was uh, uh, student, uh, I mean the question of the techniques or the the this field, and uh, you 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 have the architecture and you have the engineer uh, field, uh, but of course this is one block. There, there's no wall between those two fields, and uh, we were not really good in uh, technical uh, devices or. Uh, I mean, we didn't have a really technical uh, background. And I, I have the feeling that uh, it's not necessary. I mean, uh, the question is not to be uh, able to draw detail. I mean, the question is how to build and how to find uh, uh, the, the logic. And of course, this is always a fight because one asks this, but the other one asks this. And then, so it's always a question of, uh, really tri trivial uh, activity and then you have to s I mean sometimes you feel that you are really uh, you spend so many so much time to solve problems but that's sometimes really exciting so uh, so I think the question of the relationship between the two fields is uh, absolutely something super exciting for us but uh, and that's uh, really like uh, we said I don't know if it exists in English or mise en abîme that means you apply all the time and you really uh, like two mirrors in front. Uh, if you have two mirrors in front of, the, of them, then you will get the, mi the image and then the image and blah, blah, blah. So, so this is this, um, so the, 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 the approach is always the same. So uh, no, it's just to say, okay, uh, uh, be cool with the techniques, but uh, you just have to use this. I mean, that's what we try to I mean, we believe in that capacity of the techniques to uh, increase. I mean, uh, uh, architecture, I mean, uh, structure, pipelines, and uh, that kind of things. I mean, this is one corpus. <coughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>